<laughs> Dear Courtney, I saw Alanis again today. She was at Woolwich Market feeling over all the fruits and vegetables. There was a look of great concern on her face. Her hair appeared matted with something egg yolk, like egg yolk or a ghostly kind of ectoplasm, plasm, though it shone vividly. She had haggled the vendor down on avocados, two for a pound, but she kept going. She wanted another one, three for a pound. <laughs> And this was clearly unreasonable, but gradually the man became tired, then desperate, then desperately sad. It was as if his life was being compacted by her demand, as if his life, made out of time, which is bendable, was collapsing inwards. And after 14 minutes of watching this, I checked my watch, which is really just the screen of my iPhone SE second generation. Then when I looked up, the vendor, I couldn't be sure because I've been looking at my phone, had turned into the third avocado, larger than the others, about the size of a melon. And Alanis had picked him up and was carrying him away with her. Passing, she looked right at me with the same intensity she does at 2.56 in the video for All I Really Want, when she looks up from her harmonica straight into the camera. I knew from this look that it was now expected that I would take over his stall for reasons which she alone understood, but refused to impart to me. But I didn't. I left all those fruit and vegetables to fend for themselves. I never came back to them, and I suppose they are still there now. I don't know, because after that I went to TK Maxx, which you, an American, will call TJ Maxx, and tried on five shirts, but none of them fit me, because neither of my arms are imperceptibly, but nevertheless somewhat longer, than the other. Dear Jack, you're going to think I'm lying, but I saw Alanis on Wednesday morning in the bathroom at Thomas Edison rest stop. I think I was behind her in line at the rest stop Starbucks too, but I only knew for sure that it was her in the bathroom. I was so excited to be in the rest stop with the Pret, Starbucks, regular gas station stores, Sparrow, even a stand that sold jewelry, that I ignored the fact that I had had to pee so badly in the car badly enough to demand Jake pull over here and got right in line behind him in the long Starbucks line. I shifted my weight from foot to foot, held my breath, all the normal stuff to try to stop myself from peeing in my pants, but I had to give up and leave the line. I told Jake I wanted egg bites and a huge cold brew with whole milk. He nodded and just before I ran away to find the bathroom, I noticed Alanis there. Not so much her body or face or person exactly, but the way a teenage girl was hunched over her phone and the way her dad, or someone I only assume was either her dad or her abductor, placed his hand on her head and she shoved him away was Alanis. The series of movements. And I looked closer, and just for a second her face and body were there too, I thought. Then as I sat on the toilet I heard the voice of a woman named Jackie. I know because, oh I know her name because she said, This is Jackie. Her voice crackled on the PA system from some local New Jersey station. Remember Alanis Morissette, she asked. Yes, I do, my inner voice said. Just saw her, actually. But Jackie wasn't looking for a response. She confessed she had just been to the Alanis Morissette and garbage tour. She got super drunk and screamed along and reconnected with her teenage self. She even reconnected with her high school boyfriend on Facebook, but that's for another day on the morning show. <laughs> she couldn't recommend it enough. She felt as though she had experienced an exorcism. Someone named Wee tweeted at her and said that she too had been exercised at the Alanis garbage concert. Jackie told me to buy tickets to the tour, which has been extended. She and Wee can't recommend it enough. I closed my eyes and then I saw her, the long biblical hair hanging down over the bare shoulders. Oh, I was seeing her naked from the video where she sits in the middle of the highway. When I opened them for the briefest moment, she was still there and then she was gone. In her place was the writing on the stall door. A pop song played, and I wondered if Jackie just sat there while the song played. Did she dance? Did she take her own bathroom break or do some texting? The truth is, Jameson asked me to go to the Alanis garbage show at Jones Beach, but I didn't because I was working on my novel like an idiot. When I returned to get my egg bites, I found there was only one left. Jake told me I saw the Virgin Mary in one of your egg bites, but I ate it. The Morissette is a new poetic form developed by Courtney Bush and Jack Underwood. <laughs> the primary constraint of the Morissette is that its lines are formed out of the deliberate mistranscribing of Alanis Morissette lyrics. 
the Morris set is usually comprised of two mistranscribed verses followed by a mistranscribed chorus to end the poem. Ironic. <laughs> In Oman, tonight he ate e wallet logterine under the neck stain. In cell black tie dinner charred two ways. In cell death rope ardent two minims due late. An ism or I want it. Don't you think? Miss the play itself, mass affray, tough lie. Alpaca sous chef, unpistist skit scuba. We waded this hoedown lie to tic tac light. An essay, plain cash hound, e bought wellism, Swiss knife. Wellism, or I'm on it. Don't you think? Lambs radiate <laughs> on a reading plate. It feels so right. Window full, red in pain. Miso goo, dad vice, that hugest god aunt take. Underwood in thought, six figures. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, which is all so fun. Okay, it's hard to pick. Um, I'm gonna do method actor. Uh, that's from Not the Doctor. By Alanis Morissette. <laughs> <laughs> Idle wanton beats of iller riffs, avoidant soul layers. I'd a wand, a beer, a cast off seagull, mauled twisty. Bidden in, stepped autumn's roaring. Dido wandered, been abandoned, left her wooden, salt mined. Limits overshared, called to warn you'd bring a dark form. One I married, Wren pressed into you. Older water beamed, urbane breeze hitter, pure unvariedly point out. Night of wow, tant pis, thermometer, strident inquiry to win, might loom fur-lined monks. Shown meek the captor. This shifting powdered czar from Nineveh, indifferent charnel tempest, sticks wall-eyed. All red-nosed bad girl, fire sign wave Disney, Calm and flavor. Biting lip T ball winter hoax, a songly problem. Youth stained tombs, launch tasks for such a dying method actor. Hangover feed, hand over feet. <laughs> By Lannis Morissette. <laughs> a cab, nachos, butter, igloo. Used 80 Dior crepes, tummy ungain. I thawed. A bowel dip. You trekked me like um a uh, princess. <laughs> I'm not Houston like in they eat that. Kiosk cowboy day wash. Olaf is thickening. It's what lulled me home. He's so mouth breather. Thunder curfew Reddit fur. Fresno lip sirloin. Thou art parent. One condition I sing, Jewel Dior birth and Mordor family, Fangs foyer parents, Useful really wonky oval in spider meat, Dopey <laughs> llama fried ola, Hangover feet, Dopey surf reified laugh you, Pharrell fat you barn, yeah, I could have helped here, Itsu, Gavolt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jewel worm. Hi. Wrecked I'm in, can cured hard, trembled on, biennial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hi. Ran command Okinawa, ache, and get yon Evan rude. Yeah. <laughs> it's hollow in town. Wattage added, lit up hill. Ophelia's soju. Spit in Inya's drum kit. White tungsten. <laughs> The dusky sails. Hi. Wrinkled mint bunting off molten yucca chew toy animal. Nice in your too. At night, rib commencement in Martha, tin foil months of dinner time. Veal freet. Throne and crown. The concrete blocks hewn thunder bent. Fee fat. 
Whoops. By foe, fee fum, toothy raves. <laughs> New wave dancing, women smugglers. Tulip, Juilliard. Fuel up, pew burn. Two ply, blue urn. To lose, too stern. New pleat, lucerne. Dual screen, jewel worm. So at the moment, um, we're going off book now. Um, I'm writing these songs of things. So the song of Diet Cola, or the song of Luxury Skin Cream, or the song of um, The Disgraced Person. And I'm outsourcing the subjects of these poems to different people I know. Um, and the other day, Courtney um, gave me the song of the Academy Awards. They were like, Oh, actually, no. But I was like, no, OK, I'm, I'm, I can work with that. <laughs> so you haven't heard this before, ever. <laughs> and I only finished it on the train. Um, Song of the Academy Awards. I can't, I can't even say it. Song of the Academy Awards. This is such a surprise, I am truly lost. For words, there are so many people. I must thank who put me here this evening, put me into this beautiful gown, my hair, into croissants and my genitals behind this kind silky fabric, my desire into dormant pulsing and my voice into sensuous vibration for electric transposition. Ringo, Django, Joni, Jimmy, Joan, Carly, Kimmy, Cardi, Nikki, and especially Estrella Morente, Muchas Gracias, my high school bullies, Daniel, <laughs> Rob, and especially Neil, who knelt on my chest until the sky dimmed, then fed me fistfuls of soil and grass. Neil, I don't wish for your children to be humiliated by other children, but I don't mind if they are. <laughs> This academy is so special. This academy absorbs the poisons of the systems and communities out of which it is formed. I'm so humbled to be stood here instead of removing rubble with my hands to locate the crushed and bloodied bodies of my family. I'd like to thank my lungs, my liver, my heart and friends, my limbs. Like to thank Elaine for adult acne, Mike for the tuning, Lisa J for the song of the chinchilla, all the poets, in fact, even the bad ones, especially the bad ones. I don't know how you do it. I really don't. <laughs> Connecting this award, collecting this award reminds me how a glacier is a liquid and solid through time just as I am, but how glib human experience does if it delivers itself like dull shit into the grey timbre of my ongoing fantasy, and I see no recourse to the slow termination. I think death is a perfect little system, or else who the fuck do we think we are, or else what the fuck is all this for? For the average stone that a child finds beautiful. For the haunted way all houses are haunted. For a mixy rabbit lifts its ears into a squatting mist and blinded cannot tell it's dying from the dusk. And another lonely preposition settles into quandary. Oh baby, I'm so sorry. I can't be with you all to celebrate tonight. Right. Um, yeah, so we wanted to read some of our other poems and we were kind of thinking of keeping it on the song tip because that's what, you know, the Morissettes are really about, like songs and kind of singing. Um, so I've been writing these poems called Talking Scrolls, which are these sort of like weird syllabic, but in a fun way kind of poems. Um, but I'll just read one, I guess. Okay, sorry. I'm going to read one. The fourth talking scroll. <laughs> Two of us may be nothing alike. I am nothing like the messenger who carries me. I'm composed of sound while she is a lamb. She can do so much, but she can never be the message, as you can never be the messages, but receive and transmit them. You may confuse yourself with what you have picked up. There's a fourth person in this poem. The street smelled of garlic and snails. Why did you stop changing? A girl you once knew stepped out of the shower in the dark hotel room, placed her hand on the knob of the lamp and coursed with electricity. She was fine, but her thoughts had stopped for a moment, that constant stream of life in thought units. There is something in the hand, something else in the language. I mean, it's two different things, but there is sense in the chance meeting of words at the bar in Amherst, three friends discussed what they called their core fears. Did Linus, by dying, invent music? Or didn't he? 
can sadness itself invent something to comfort and help us? Who invented the sadness? The Greeks missed the little boy who they swore was with the dogs just that morning. Alive, pink. If you stop by Walgreens, I need something, said his mother. His father was out being Apollo. These are stories that matter. These stories tell us what we already know in familiar rhythms. I don't remember what Dido was lamenting. I don't know where paradise went. Are there others like you out there on the plains, one who knows mourning by heart? I've got to tell you how I love you always. I think of it on gray mornings with death in my mouth, one pole of survival being your confusion. The other will be ritual. The bag said flowers for all occasions. Richard sang on the big stage the night Gabriel lost her baby. The angels blew two trumpets. The other angels screamed their chants into the caves whose echoes held together and collapsed into songs, more and more songs, dirges, ballads, requiem, two-step, oh bod, the kind from the radio, till someday you find one song, one real song, and in the song will be a grail, a real grail. Are we reading just more poems? Um, I mean, can I just do a little clap? Like, yeah. <laughs> We have, I mean, we've been going, I was looking, so we started at 8.15, it's 8.32, so we have That's good time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll read a poem um, called My Name is Zonal Coordinator, and it, um, the title comes from the first line of a spam email I was sent. I thought this was good because we're at spam. Um, <laughs> and it combines two things, the poem, which is like spam emails, but also guided meditations um, for insomnia, um, which I was listening to a lot of at the time of writing. My name is Zonal Coordinator. Listen to my voice happening inside you. Feel the way I pronounce these words, moving them through you like fruits of different sizes and shapes. Apricot. I'm going to move the word apricot to touch against your liver. Is that okay? <laughs> Do you know where your liver is? Apricot, there you found it. You are beginning to feel lighter. You are on a generic tropical beach. Your wisdom teeth are calm and happy. Your family forgives you. You are lava rising through the mantle of the world, oblivious to events upon its surface. Your friends like you. You are floating. My peregrine will guide you. See small adjustments to her wingtips. Nothing is holding you up now. The second digit of your security number has fallen far away. No one is cross with you. The world will return to its natural state of non-existence, but only when you do. Repeat after me. I'm feeling so good about myself. I'm feeling so good about myself. <laughs> okay, I'll do... I tend to write long poems, so this is, I think, my shortest poem. Um, and this is from my book, I Love Information, which I have a couple copies if one, if y'all, if anybody wants so to pick one up, because this is late preamble. My thing that year was believing in things. There would be a lost pilot, an internal logic in each event. It was easy with the children. We found money for Elsa from Frozen, plastic chess pieces gathered in arrangements on the floor. Ten of the kids piled scarves over the bodies of the two smallest as they lay on the floor playing dead. A pink, then a red scarf fell. They told me as I approached, before I even asked, these are our bodies and we said it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> With the adults, it was harder to imagine what they showed me in word and action that they cared about, had some internal logic strong enough to believe in, but I did it. I was the dad who can sing. Pain is the lost pilot and I was the lost pilot, and I was the person who had come a long way with arms outstretched from the famous poem, and I was the cowboy, and that year turned into many years.
Go back into the book. So, Love it. Okay. Genius. <laughs> Dear Courtney, I know I haven't written in a long while, and the reason for that is that I haven't seen Alanis anywhere, and I didn't want to disappoint you. But then yesterday, I was having an unusual amount of difficulty putting away an ironing board, and I realised that Alanis was with me. It's been very hot here because of global warming and it being summer, and I think that might have something to do with why I was finding the act of collapsing the ironing board so challenging. But I also think the heat was also, ma was also made me less attentive to Alanis. I'm sure I must have missed her on numerous occasions because I've been too preoccupied with being very hot. But yesterday, in my frustration with the ironing board, I think I must have uttered a kind of plea, a kind of bat symbol, if you will. Not out loud, but with my whole body. And Alanis responded, and I felt it. Immediately, I was able to collapse the ironing board with ease, which I was pleased about because I wanted to concentrate on this new feeling of Alanis being there. I started looking around my kitchen for Alanis, but she wasn't there in human form or even in a certain slant of sunlight across the kitchen door, which leads to our garden. She wasn't the coffee pot, still warm, I touched it, and she wasn't in the fridge or taking the form of any of the items on the countertop. For a stupid second, I thought that maybe I was Alanis, but then I remembered that for perceptive, that the perceptive faculties do not perceive themselves. The eye does not see the eye, for example, and this is how I know I exist. So I could not be Alanis because I could perceive her. I went into the bathroom to check my mouth in the mirror, but she wasn't in there. And I patted myself down to see if she was otherwise about my person. It felt good patting myself down. And so I kept doing it for a while. But then I felt Alanis <laughs> withdrawing, like when you tell a child, colder, 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 when they're looking for something. Alanis was saying, colder, colder, to me like a child. So I returned to the spot in the kitchen where I first felt her presence. The strength of the feeling that Alanis was nearby intensified. Warmer, warmer, hot, hot. And that's when I realised, duh. Alanis was the ironing board. <laughs> Having put her away already, I did not want to disturb her. I stroked her back, not in a creepy way, <laughs> in a caring way, and whispered, rescue, rescue. It's been a tough couple of months. The cat got a lesion in its mouth and started drooling brown shit everywhere, and after two vet visits and some investigations, it was discerned to be cancerous, and we had to have her put down. It was peaceful and I dug a deep hole for her in the garden to keep the body safe from foxes. There's been other bad things going on, but they're too tedious to explain in any, in any way. Alanis had fallen asleep soon after I whispered, whispered rescue and I left her to it. She wasn't there the next morning, just the ironing board. I don't like the sound of egg bites at all, but I <laughs> understand what they are. In the UK, they put similar discs of egg into the brioche breakfast baps in prep though they are not filled. They remind me of when I tried to go on a low carb diet for about a month and I invented something I called broccoli bread, TM. This was just whipped eggs poured into a tinfoil mold that I would fashion into which I would add the frond like tops of broccoli as a kind of aggregate to bind the egg better. I could then use these to make sandwiches, perhaps with some bacon in the middle. This would have been about 2012, I think. I should have patented it. It sure would be humorous to be a broccoli bread millionaire. It would be great to go around saying that to people. I hope you're well. I want to talk to you about baseball. I'm obsessed with cricket and I think I would be the same about baseball if I lived in the US. Maybe if I make it over to NY one day in the future we could go to a game. Maybe Alanis could come too. Dear Jack, I hope it has cooled down. Your last visit with Alanis sounds a bit sad. Everything is sad when it's hot. I'm glad you finally saw her though and helped her to rest. I feel like your letter sent Alanis my way and I have to admit I haven't been looking for her anywhere either. I've been trying very hard to have a good summer. Going to the beach, riding the cyclone at Coney Island, eating ice cream, watching baseball. It could be that she stood right in front of me with one in, in her pocket or whatever many times and I never saw her. She took matters into her own hands though, which I'm grateful for. Part of my obsession with baseball is an obsession with a player named Mark Canna of the New York Mets, the team I love. I never once thought about Mark Canna before I went to a game this year. He's a very generic looking white male baseball player, tall, skinny, no lips, alongside some of the other Mets, Francisco, Mr. Smile Indoor, Starling Marte, the hottest man I've ever seen in my life, 
Polar Bear Pete Alonzo, and El Baby, there was no reason to ever glance at Mark Hanna. He's a solid outfielder and a pretty good hitter. Not even a scourge of the team making mistakes left and right to draw attention to himself. But at the game, I burst out laughing when I first heard his walk-up song, which is MIA's Paper Planes, <laughs> in 2022, and with him being Mark Hanna. <laughs> I realized in that moment that Mark Hanna has a sense of humor, that he's special, and that he's perfect. <laughs> he has become one of the most important Mets in my heart. At every game, at every at-bat, Mark walks out to Paper Planes. Once at City Field, I was in line before the game started because I wanted a hot dog and I knew the game was going to start any minute, so I was nervous, I wouldn't have time. I then heard Paper Planes by MIA, that most familiar, almost cringely nostalgic song blasting on every speaker, and I left the line and ran to my seat to see Mark bat. I had to wait until an inning break to get my hot dog. I talk about Mark Hanna all the time. This summer, I've been trying to get other poets interested in baseball and hopefully in the Mets. I don't feel like the Yankees are very poetic in spirit, but I do know some poets who are Yankees fans, and some Berrigan for one, so I do have respect. A little bit. So I've been telling the poets about Mark Hanna because they say, oh, I don't like baseball, I don't like sports, and I'm like, no, 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 listen. And I show them a picture of Mark Hanna, and I say, this man walks out to Paper Planes by MIA. <laughs> anyway, as a promotion to sell tickets, presumably, they had a special day at City Field called Women's Day. As far as I could tell, they just changed the beautiful Mets logo from blue and orange to purple and green for the day, and it looked like absolute shit. <laughs> the only other thing they did was have the players choose songs by women as their walk-up songs for that game. <laughs> I did not go to the game because I had to go to work that day, but I looked over the list of songs. Mark Canna, the only player to already walk out to a song by a female artist, would be walking out that day to You Oughta Know by Alanis Morissette. <laughs> it was then I saw her, waving at me from the list, laughing at me really, Look at the links I went to find you, she was saying. It was also then that my admiration for Mark Hanna became even stronger. I get chills when I imagine him walking out to you ought to know. I love his sense of drama, his creativity. I love what he's doing to the game of baseball with his choices in music. I imagine him approaching the batter's box while Alana screams over a zillion speakers, I'm here to remind you of the mess you left when you went away. <laughs> With, yeah, you should finish with. I, I think the last you should finish one. with Angry Hill. Anki, oh yeah, okay. Okay. This will be the last. This will be the last. Little bit ever. Just show me the spelling of his name. I'll look him up. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> you should tell uh, about your story as well. I we tried to get him to blurb. Oh, about Mark? No, about your two stories. Oh. Yeah, well, we met because, yeah, okay. They don't actually know each other. We met today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we met. Um, Jack, uh, kind of weird, really weird. Um, Jack actually tweeted, I guess we have, like, some poet friends in common or whatever, because remember on Twitter, it used to show up other random people that, and it was no, such I a think. nice feature because you could find these cool things that your friends like. Yeah. Um, and Jack had tweeted this poem, and I reply guided it, and I was like, what is this? Like, I need to know more about this. And then he was like, well, I'll tell you about it. And then we have been writing these poems together. And then we were like, these poems are too weird. We have to add something else. <laughs> and so then we were like, what's normal? Okay, let's pretend we keep seeing Alanis Morissette everywhere. <laughs> I like to think that the two speakers in the letters are like met on some sort of support group for people who see <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alanis Morissette. And this is the product. Anyway, so this is the first Morissette that um, Courtney saw and got one other like. I forget who the other like for this was. Um, the Ankyu. Thou shalt lessen awful placenta robotics. Thou shalt top in Eden one eye for ugh. Thou shalt bend man's errand tangled in care knots. Thou shalt not nay never allude to Pluto. Drown out snow long be in Massachusetts. Found out renaming your big energy. Now that gun's especially high in the hideout, drown out hot creative death wish shopping. Spank you friendlier, bend you error, say what this ill ocean meant. Think you're Derrida, stand <laughs> through confidence. Thank you, thank you, sirens. <laughs>